Welcome back guys. Today we are going to take a few pieces of gold that have been once refined in some of my other videos and turn it into pure 24 karat gold and check it with our Sigma. I have three pieces here totaling 1.62 troy ounces. And there's a fourth piece here, which I'm gonna refine separately. It may contain a little bit of gold. I'm not really sure. It's from my melting dishes and things like that. So the total weight's 1.82, but we're really just gonna go with 1.63 troy ounces here. And we're gonna check them each with our Sigma right now, just to see what kind of test that they actually will pass. I do have a wand for this Sigma, but I was able to get a pretty good reading without it. So here we go. This is probably the most pure piece that I have. You can see that by the shininess of it. I'm gonna try 91.7, not quite getting there. Let's try 98.6 pretty close. There we go. So that, that piece is around 98.6% pure. Not enough to pass the three nines. That one also 98.6. And this one's not quite as shiny. You can see it's probably got some more impurities. Let's step it down a little bit, maybe to 90%. Balanced copper. Nope. Let's try 91.7, which is 22 carat. Not quite, so still a little more pure than that. Definitely not three nines plus. We'll find it here, maybe the equivalent of American Eagle. I saw it there, oh, yep. Somewhere around the purity of an American Eagle. So the remaining piece, I'm not sure if it's mostly copper. It doesn't pass as copper. It's definitely dense and heavy like copper. Could be some lead or something. We're gonna run that separate and we're not gonna use it as a consideration for the overall total. Let's see, maybe silver, no. Sigma recognizes that it's metal, but that's about it. Try lower quality gold, well, saw it there for a minute. That sample may be too small for it to accurately read. Maybe 90%. Balanced copper, no, nothing there. What all is gonna be needed? You're gonna need sodium metabisulfite, which is bonide stump out from Home Depot. Sulfuric acid, drain cleaner. Make sure it's sulfuric acid based. Need distilled water. Hydrochloric acid, which is muriatic acid. Nitric acid. And some stannous chloride, not necessarily required, but if you haven't done this before, definitely need it need some coffee filters, and you need a heat source. So first, we're going to take our beaker, put the gold in it, just the three pieces. We're gonna leave the one piece out. Beautiful pieces of gold, we're gonna make them more beautiful. So for starters, if this were a low quality gold, you would have to encord it with either silver or copper to reduce the alloy down to a lower percentage where it would dissolve in nitric acid. But what we're doing here is we're gonna immediately start with what's called aqua regia. So you're gonna start with hydrochloric acid, in this instance, about 400 mil, and then we're gonna add a few mil per gram of gold. Since we have 45 grams of gold, we're gonna need a little bit of nitric acid here, but you plan on three to five mil per gram of gold to dissolve the gold into solution. And now we're going to add the nitric acid. We'll fast forward here and watch it all dissolve into solution. As it boils off, you're going to need to add a little bit more of each to continue the process. You do not want to use too much nitric acid. If you use too much nitric, it's going to make the process later down the line much more difficult. starting to boil down pretty low there. So I added some more hydrochloric acid and a little bit more nitric acid to the solution so we can continue the aqua regia.
and we'll add a little bit more hydrochloric acid and nitric acid once again. You can be more aggressive with the nitric acid, but the risk is you have some left over and I'm trying to avoid that. So I'm taking the, the cautious side of things and it generally takes a little longer to do it this way. So this process that's been sped up probably took about two, two and a half hours to do. I think we're just about there. One tiny little piece that's not dissolved that it's just about there. So we'll turn the heat off, let everything cool off, and then we'll proceed to the next step. Now we have a nice dark orange, very clear liquid. We're going to put a few milliliters of sulfuric acid in, and what this will do is pre precipitate any lead, which is you know another impurity that's in gold typically, especially when you're dealing with computer scrap. So we're going to go and put probably three to five milliliters of sulfuric acid in, and it will cloud up the solution temporarily, and then we'll proceed to the next step. The next step is very important in determining the final purity of your gold. We're gonna grab our funnel and our coffee filters, and in my instance, I use four or five of them. If you have a finer filter, the better, because it'll catch more of the impurities. Put four or five of them in there, stacked on top of each other, wet it down with distilled water. Again, anytime we're using water in refining, we're always using distilled water. Do not use tap water for this because it a lot of time has chlorine, fluoride, things like that, other contaminants, which you don't want to introduce. Now what we're going to do, of course, is pour the solution through the filter and we're going to catch everything on the other side of the filter. Make sure that you rinse your filter very thoroughly. You want all of the yellow or orange color out of your filter because that is gold that will come out of solution later. And here are our impurities that remain. That could be lead or some other mineral that's not gold. That's left over, that's what we wanna catch. So our filtered solution, now we're going to use sodium metabisulfite, which is bone-eyed stump out from Home Depot. Very inexpensive, I think it's about $6. You're gonna put this in here, do not breathe any of the fumes. Make sure that you're in a well-ventilated area when you're doing this. The gold is going to precipitate drop out of solution and it's going to form a brown mud at the bottom. How do you know when everything has come out of solution? That's why you have stannous chloride. If you've done this long enough, you get a pretty good eye and a pretty good feel for this. You could actually just leave it sit here for a few hours and it'll settle and the solution should be clear after it's all come out of solution. If you don't want to wait, you can use some of your coffee filter, grab a new piece of coffee filter, dip it in there, just a small amount, put your stannous chloride on it to check it. And if there's a brown or a black stain, there's still a golden solution. It's always not a bad idea to check with stannous chloride. Something to note is that stannous chloride does have a short shelf life. If you're buying some that's pre-made, make sure you use it within about 30 to 60 days. It's also not a bad idea to test it. So when you before you use the, the sodium metabisulfite, you can dip your filter paper into the gold and test it. And obviously it's in solution, so it should turn colors. So now we have all of the gold that has dropped out of the solution and it's sitting at the bottom of our beaker. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna let it sit for a few hours to completely settle, just to make sure that we have a perfectly clear solution and then we'll proceed. Here's the final result. After sitting, you can see the brown mud on the bottom. That is our pure 24 karat gold. Now we're going to filter it through coffee filter once again, pour it through, catch all of that brown mud or sludge, whatever you wanna call it, that's our gold. You still definitely want to do this either outdoors or in a, an area with open ventilation because the sodium metabisulfite that remains in this solution is still not very good for you. There is our gold, beautiful. Next step, brand new crucible with some flux in it. 
Make sure we have a nice surface to melt our gold in. I'm gonna use map gas and a torch. Hot crucible, let's burn off the paper, get to making some gold. Right here I was trying to burn off some a little bit of flux that kept sticking to the top, but we'll get rid of that here in just a moment. And here is our final product. We're gonna clean it up here a little bit further. I actually let it cool too long. The flux started to solidify here. So you can see the little crystals on it. That's usually a common issue after smelting or melting gold. So we're gonna take our piece of gold. We're going to put some distilled water and sulfuric acid slowly together because there is an exothermic reaction, which is heat. I wanna be very careful to bring the temperature up slowly. And then we're going to add it to heat, boil it a little bit, not really necessary, you can just put it on a little bit of heat, but I like to boil it for good measure, and then we will rinse it off, stamp it, and weigh it, and let's see how things are looking. Here is our final piece of gold. I have my Texas stamp that I always like to put on all of my metals. I still may remelt this later into a bar. I really do like this little piece though. Much shinier than what we started with. It's a pretty piece of gold. Well, let's first weigh it and then we'll check it on our Sigma and see if it passes the three nines or even four nines test. Scale calibrated in troy ounces. We started with 1.62, 1.63, and now we're down to 1.59. We did not include that fourth small piece in this batch. I originally said I was, and I ended up not doing that. So we did lose a little bit as expected because you got rid of the impurities. So now over to the Sigma. Calibrated version 1.23. Three nines. Boom, right in the middle. Pure 24 karat gold. Love it. Passes with flying colors. Not even barely within the brackets. It is right in, in the middle. So there you go, guys. Please consider subscribing if you're not already. And any of the products that I've used, you can find a link in the video description as to where to get them. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.